Uh, thank you very much, Ellen. Can you guys see my screen? Yes. Thank you. Good. So uh, we've already heard from these excellent uh, initial talks that HCC uh, even uh, is worldwide a huge problem, and it's on the rise in the USA. A majority of cases arise in a cirrhotic liver. The annual incidence is 3 to 5%. Hep C is waning due to uh, the excellent uh, DAA therapies, but uh, alcoholism and fatty liver disease are still the major risk factors. And a take home message that we've already heard is the only chance to cure HCC is liver resection or liver transplant. Uh, before we get on with the data, I just want to um, mention I've been in Pittsburgh a long time and our liver service pre predates me. Dr. Starzl moved from uh, Colorado to the University of Pittsburgh in 1981. That was the year I graduated high school. And this is our cathedral learning where the cl there's classrooms and the chancellor who's the president has his office on the first floor. The importance of Dr. Starzl to the city and the region is shown in the Pittsburgh Magazine three times made him ma named him man of the year. It, when Dr. Starzl was here in the 80s and early 90s, we were really not doing laparoscopic liver surgery, and then we moved into the field uh, in the late 90s, and now there's a fair amount of data on the cancer outcomes of laparoscopic liver resection compared to open for HCC, so I'm just going to summarize a few of the studies. This table lists more than a dozen studies going chronologically from year 2001 to 2016, comparing LLR, laparoscopic liver resection versus open liver resection. And when you, if you sum all the studies, it's about 1,000 lab cases to 1,400 open. These are the countries they were published in, uh, Asia, Europe, and uh, one from the USA. And these are the five-year overall survival uh, studies showing not a single study showed any significant difference between uh, laparoscopic versus open. And the conclusions from these case match or propensity score match studies are that lap liver resection has comparable five-year overall survival versus open liver resection for HCC. This is the largest of the propensity score match studies for HCC comparing lap to open resection. It was a multi-center study in uh, 31 sites in Japan in uh, a decade from 2000 to 2010. The patients had excellent matching for age, gender, child score, ICG clearance, hepatitis status, tumor size, number location, and extent of resection. And you can see the survival Kaplan-Meier curves here are nearly superimposable with no difference in one, three, or five five-year disease-free survival or overall survival comparing the two groups. This was published in uh, J JHPB Science in 2015 by Takahara. There's been one randomized clinical trial in this field. It comes from an Egyptian group. It was a small study, but we applaud them nonetheless. They published it in 2018, and they compared 25 cases of lap liver resection and 25 cases of open. They, they, had, they selected pretty straightforward cases, solitary tumors less than five centimeters, all in child's acerotics, and in peripheral segments, uh, either left lateral or anterior right segments that were straightforward for lap liver resection. And with the randomization, the background characteristics were the same. Tumor size, that median was 3.3 centimeters. AFP levels were similar. The uh, conclusions were that the lap liver resection had shorter OR time, shorter length of stay, less narcotic use, and shorter time to diet. So the lab had improved clinical benefits, uh, but there was no difference in blood loss, transfusions, R0 resection rate, overall complications, and short and midterm disease-free survival uh, between the groups were comparable. So this small randomized clinical trial is a positive study in favor of clinical benefits of lap liver resection compared to open without compromising uh, midterm follow-up of the cancer outcomes. This is a large uh, review of the world literature from Ruben Saria, published in Annals of Surgery 2016, where he looked at nearly 10,000 cases of lap liver resection. Two-thirds for, were for malignancy, and of those, half were for hepatocellular carcinoma. It was a review of 179 published studies in the literature. Mortality it was good to see that it was less than one-half of 1%, <coughs> and the lap liver resection group had less complications 
in, in a subset meta-analysis, blood loss, transfusions, and length of stay, uh, and looking at a 3,000 subset uh, meta-analysis. The HCC was the number one uh, tumor resected uh, indication for laparoscopic liver resection. There were 3,000 cases of HCC amongst the 10,000 cases here. So about half the malignancies were HCC that were resected. And you can see that over time, our lap liver uh, skills have improved because uh, in green is, means major resection, whereas blue was minors. For, so the first 10 years reporting, very few major hepatectomy studies were published. And now a third uh, to 40% of the cases of lap liver resection are now done for major hepatectomy uh, compared to minor. There's been several meta-analysis on the topic as well. This was one of the early ones published in 2013 where they looked at 15 non-randomized case match studies. And the uh, statistics showed lap liver resection had favorable outcomes for what we've already talked about, blood loss, transfusion, morbidity, and length of stay. No difference in surgical margins or five-year overall survival or recurrence-free survival between the groups. And this early meta-analysis showed that there were benefits of lap liver resection with no compromise of oncologic outcomes. Uh, four years later, we have a larger meta-analysis study uh, of 44 non-randomized case match studies looking now at 2,000 versus 3,000 cases. And again, the lap liver had favorable outcomes for blood loss transfusion, R0, wide resection margin, length of stay, morbidity in 30 day, and ca cancer survival comparable uh, between the groups, one, three, five year old, no differences. So the data pretty much shows that we have comparable outcomes. There's been one or two provocative studies maybe suggesting um, lap liver has benefits to survival, but some of that looks to me more like statistical manipulation. And I don't think the data shows superiority of one group or the other, including the randomized trial and the largest meta-analysis show comparable results. I now want to shift for a few minutes and talk about how lap liver surgery has, has expanded or diffused because of these early excellent initial studies. So this was a global diffusion study on lap liver surgery published by Hibby in 2014, and it shows a, a world heat map. Black means 10 cases and orange means one case of expanding to many countries. Also, lap liver resection in all of the early studies were done in early child A cirrhotics, but it's now been there's some data published expanding to more advanced child B cirrhotics, including a few rare child C cirrhotics. This was a case from Pittsburgh where we had a 78-year-old man, a solitary tumor here, hypervascular with washout LIRADS 5. We'll hear more about the LIRAD scoring from Dr. Winslow's talk coming up. And the goal, this man was a borderline B to C. Here's massive portal hypertension, recanalized umbilical vein, rock hard, uh, macronodular cirrhotic liver. And if we open this guy, probably would have decompensated it with either ascites or variceal bleed. So the key is to stay laparoscopic <coughs> just uh, because of technology. We can do a wedge resection on that. And here we've accomplished the resection. Uh, and uh, the margins there are uh, close but negative. And at one year out, he was cancer-free uh, on that resection site. And this is what it looks like, laparoscopic liver resection. We're all familiar with the pure laparoscopic approach. Here's a study now looking at our series in Pittsburgh uh, in comparing our early A cirrhotics, 80 child's A cirrhotics compared to 20 Bs, and we did include six Cs. The median duration of follow-up was almost two years. The child's BCs had no difference in blood loss, transfusions, complications, or negative margins compared to our child's A patients. So this was a small single center series saying that, yes, maybe we can pick them some select patients that are more advanced cirrhosis to undergo lap liver resection. And then uh, recently, British Journal of Surgery 2001, Roberto Trossi just published a large international multi-center study in 17 centers looking at 382 liver resections, 160 laparoscopic versus 220 open, and then was able to do a strong propensity score match comparing 100 lap liver to 100 open liver. We included some of our Pittsburgh patients in the series. And in this international study, the lap liver again had 
and these are all child's B cirrhotics, had less blood loss, less transfusion, less decompensation with post opicities, less morbidity, major complications, and shorter length of stay. No difference in margins, 95 versus 96, so very good are zero margins. And five, long-term cancer survival, trended in favor of lab liver, but was not statistically significant. So no difference in five-year survival between the groups. So this is the largest series looking at lap liver resection in child's B cirrhosis for hepatocellular carcinoma. One other important point is, and we've observed this as well, that laparoscopic liver resection facilitates future liver surgery, including salvage liver transplantation for HCC. This is study published uh, over 10 years ago, but it was from Daniel Alexis Laurent and Daniel Cherokee, uh, excellent, very experienced liver team. And what's noteworthy here is the same liver team performed all the operations, whether lap liver resection, open liver resection, or subsequent transplant. So they looked at 24 patients who underwent liver transplant after prior resection for HCC, 12 of the antecedents and liver resections were using an open approach and 12 were laparoscopic. The indications why the patients required a subsequent liver transplant were recurrent HCC in 19 of the 24 and salvage, uh, which is salvage liver transplant, or if the uh, pathologic features of resection were so aggressive, they said we better bridge them to transplant and just go ahead and get them transplanted before they recur, and bridge was five. And what they showed was that the lap liver resection group had much less adhesions and facilitated the liver transplant because those that had the lap liver had a shorter hepatectomy time, shorter total OR liver transplant time, less blood loss, and less need for transfusion. So it really shows that it's almost as if when you reoperate on lap liver surgery, it's maybe minimal or mental adhesions and as if you were never there versus we all know what it's like going back after open liver surgery. So I will conclude by saying that surgical resection or liver transplant is the only chance to cure HCC. Lap liver resections for HCC has been performed uh, probably well over 20,000 cases, but it's been reported in over 10,000 patients worldwide with comparable cancer outcomes to open Lap liver resection results in decreased liver failure and decompensation versus open liver resection. And lap liver resection for HCC can be done in selected child's B cirrhotic patients. So thank you very much. And that concludes my summary of the outcomes of laparoscopic liver resection.